Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I know I've been gone for a long hiatus but I promise you I'm back and I'm back with another true crime video and we are going to be doing the story of Unam Shamtwa. Now if you are new to the channel I try to do these videos often. I've done a couple already and I will be doing more in the near future. Now before we dive into today's video I want to get a few things out of the way. First and foremost, this case has not had its day in court. So everything that I'm saying now, legally, I have to say allegedly. So what I won't be doing is saying allegedly each and after every sentence. Consider this as housekeeping. I'm saying allegedly now. So that's it. Number two, I try to reach out to families every time I do these types of stories. Sometimes I'm able to get them. Sometimes I'm not. And in this case, I did. I reached out to the sister. She gave me a blessing to do this video. And I got most of my information from her. And then the next two things is that this video is extremely triggering. So if you know that you can't stomach this type of information, kindly prioritize your mental health and not watch. And lastly, I will not be tolerating any sort of victim blaming or shaming in the comment section. So kindly refrain from doing such. And with that said, finally, let's dive into today's video. Today's video takes us to a Jikini location in Mkanduli, Eastern Cape, and subsequently a small town not far from it in Mtata, also in the Eastern Cape. Nam Singh Wahle Shemtwa was born on the 19th of June in 1987 in a Jigeni location in Mkanduli to mother Joyce Nonsindi Sumtwa. Now Nam spent her early childhood years here where she went to a Jigeni secondary school. She was known to be bubbly, kind, smiley, vivacious and excited about life. Unamsha would then move to Umtata Estuadra View to join her extended family that was headed by her uncle Usia Bongamtwa and her aunt Tembagazi Mtwa. When, when Namsha arrived in Umtata, she continued her primary education at Southernwood Primary School where she excelled in her academics and thereafter she went to St. John's College where she would do her high school education. When Namsha left St. John's, she went to King Sabata Dalinjebo FET College where she got her senior certificate. It was around this time when Namsha first met Major Becky Zulu. Namsha was 17 years old and Major was 25 years old at the time. Major had barely any money. He was starting out in his businesses. He was living in a small flat. And Namsha, on the other hand, was at the Walter Susulu University starting towards her public management degree. Three years later, Namsa graduated and on the other side, Major's, Major's tent businesses were starting to pick up and he was branching off into entertainment and other businesses of the like. The relationship between Major and Namsa, on the other hand, was not going as well as their professional lives. If anything, it was going south. Major had grown extremely possessive, manipulative, and physically abusive. Now, although Namsa was in her 20s at this time, but she entered this relationship at the mere age of 17, and that's a very impressionable age. Namsa endured the abuse, told only her sister and a few friends, but swore them to secrecy. Major and Namsa were in a relationship for many years at this point, but funny enough, the next thing that happened was that Major went and married a different woman while still in a relationship with Namsla and while refusing for her to leave him. And this is a message that Unamsla wrote to one of her sisters. And it's basically saying, Basically what this means is that Namsla had asked him nicely, um, to, okay, let's end the relationship then because I can't welcome your decision to go marry another woman. And basically what Major had told Nansha was that, listen, girl, uh, so what you want to do is you want to go and take off your your undergarments for a different man or other man. And so you basically see how manipulative this person is. First of all, sorry, man, um, you're married to someone else, so leave me alone. So this is just the kind of predicament Nansha found herself in. 
Sadly, at this point, Major was in full control of Unamsa, to the point of where the people felt like Unamsa was brainwashed. Now, we'll give you a few examples of the extent of control Major had over Unamsa. Now, you must remember that at this point, Major is married, he stays at home with his wife, and Namsa stays alone in a flat in Umtata by herself and is not allowed to maneuver around. And you'll see what I mean by that. So these are a few interactions I'll show you that Namsa had with major over whatsapp okay so basically what you see here is namsa messages first and she says baby and this is around 5 36 in the evening and she's like baby three minutes later she says nana because there's no response and there's still no response so she goes ahead and says what she wants and she basically says and this basically means that is like can i please go and have supper Estuada, which is her home Ah, uh, please. You must remember, Namsa is staying at alone in a flat in Umtata, and she is from Umtata, so home is around like five, five kilometers away, three kilometers away. It's very close. And she has those three please emojis. And he replies 15 minutes later and says, I said on a weekend. And then immediately after, Namsa responds and, say, responds and says, basically meaning they cook today. And in most cases, most people have during the weekend, people prefer take out or brides or whatever. So maybe that's the day they actually have a home cooked meal. And she's like, they're cooking today. And then she immediately says again, they're basically saying, please. And then five minutes later, Major responds and say, I'll call you later. I'm still busy here. And then Namsa's fine. She doesn't respond. This is six o'clock, seven o'clock, nothing. Eight o'clock, nothing. Five to nine, Namsa decides to message again and says, hi, baby. And then they still no reply, reply at five to nine. So 45 minutes later, she says again, hi, baby, Unjan. Basically meaning, hi, baby, how are you? Guys, this is hours later. Now the time is nine o'clock. She's been asking since five. And finally, he responds and says, I'm good, and you? She replies and says, not well, but Ndizoba right. How was your day? And Ndizoba right basically means that, but I'll be fine. And all he does is just respond with a sharp emoji. And that's how the conversation ended. And Namsa did not go home that night. She stayed at home alone in her flat. Didn't go home, which was less than five minutes away, while Major was home with his family. That's the type of control there is. I'm going to give you another example through their WhatsApp messages again, how Major had full control of Unamsa to the extent of which if Major said Namsa jump, Namsa is going to ask how high Major, how high and like how long should I stay up? And this is an example. So this time around, Major Begizulu messages Namsa first. And the first thing he says is that, basically meaning go to the office now. And then um, a few minutes later, Namsa responds and says, thirty minutes, which means that I'm just finishing off bathing. Uh, please give me 30 minutes. There was no water. And then immediately after she replies, no, Dilapai officine. Guys, if you look at the time between when she said, please give me 30 minutes to the time she said, I'm outside, and Dilapa Ufusin means I'm outside the office. She said, please give me 30 minutes at 13.37. At 13.52, she was like, I'm outside the office. Basically, this was the, what this tells me is that immediately after she sent that message, she was out of the door and she was going towards the office because she just knew the kinds of repercussions. And she knew that, you know what, with the person I'm dealing with, 30 minutes is a lifetime, or 30 minutes is a fight, or 30 minutes is just too much. And therefore, at 13.52, she says, basically meaning I'm outside the office. And this is Major's office, so he was sending her to his office. And then to prove that he's there, she's there, at 13.52, she sends the location of where she is, which is outside his office. And what does Major do? At 13.54, he says, Yega. Basically, leave it, or never mind, or whatever. Like, don't come anymore. Like, what the hell? Like, how mad is this person? I'm so angry. Now, as with most abusers, there's normally overcompensation or they're trying to balance out the bad with the good. So that's what Major also did. 
Major did the most terrible, atrocious things to Nam Lam Twa, but then he tried in his head, psychotic head, to balance them out with doing extremely lavish things. So Namla always had the latest cars. She had a red BMW. She just recently, before she passed away, she got a Mercedes-Benz GLA 350 AMG. So basically what Major would do is that he would do the worst thing to you and then would say, oh, okay, here's an AMG, or here's a BMW, or here's this, here's that, here's this. So it is basically abuser mentality. Sadly, the situation didn't get any better. In fact, it got worse because Major was not only emotionally abusive, condescending and controlling towards Namsa, but was also extremely physically abusive and each time was worse than the last. Her aunt would later mention in an ACBC interview that they had no idea about the extent of the abuse. In fact, Namsa was so good at hiding via makeup and wearing long sleeves tops and long dresses when she was back at home that literally they had no idea how bad it was and the sisters um who knew everything were sworn to secrecy because of how violent major was now nam Tlam Twa's sister which is sanga would later mention at her funeral that she witnessed some of the beatings she watched major hit on Namsa so much so that she would then wait for him to finish he would leave the house and then she would clean her app, which is just so sad. In most cases, back on the bed. At this point, Namsha was working at the Aura Tambo municipality at their finance department. Her colleagues would later mention that, you know what, although Namsha never spoke about her problems, but her body spoke for her. Basically, they could see that she was going through a lot because she always had wounds, though she tried to cover it up. But really, if it's hot in the office, you are going to take off the jacket. And people are unfortunately going to see the scars. And unfortunately, these are not your friends, maybe, and they don't want to ask what's wrong. But they did mention that they saw that she was going through a lot, which is so painful. Major continued to have complete disregard for Unam while refusing for her to break up with him. Another example of how emotionally exhausting and draining this relationship was, was that Namsla had to go everywhere while with Major with money in her undergarments. Now, I don't mean that she had to have money in her bank account or in her wallet or perhaps have her phone for e-wallet. No, she had to have money in her undergarments every time she was going anywhere with Major because of an experience she had with Major. And that experience was that they had an argument in the car while driving back from a holiday they had and they were passing Gomcha. And well, he decided that, you know what, I don't want to drive with this person anymore and I'm just going to leave her in the middle of nowhere, essentially three hours away from Mumtata. And she was not allowed to get out of the car with her phone or her wallet or anything of that sort. She literally had to leave by herself. And he left, he went back to Mumtata all by himself and he would later mention to her that i wish you were raped now this is just the emotional trauma that namla had to go through with all major and the whole confiscation of assets is not a new thing to uh major that's actually his mo he will take his stuff back if he's upset one of the examples that the sister shared um where major confiscated items was that, you know, during times where there are gender-based violence cases that are trending, uh, so Unamla happened to repost someone that had posted something about gender-based violence and Major saw that post. And he immediately took the phone away. And he gave that phone away to his helper in his house where he stayed with the wife. So basically, he took Namla's phone and took it to his marital home and gave it to his helper. And the reason for this, he said that clearly you don't know what phones are for. You don't know why you have a phone. If you're going to be reposting gender-based violence stuff, then clearly 
you have no idea what phones are for. And obviously, we all know why he didn't want her to post anything that had to do with gender-based violence. It doesn't end with just the phones. The cars were also confiscated if Namsa didn't ask for permission, if she was going anywhere or she was going to her family without permission, or if she had anyone that she was not supposed to have in the car, then the car would be confiscated and it would be given to the wife to drive around. And now the big question is, where does the wife think the car is from? The wife knew Namsa. I don't know how that works. I'm not trying to judge anyone, but definitely the wife knew that there is a Namsa. And how that goes, I have no idea. With that said, I just want to show you an example of how Namsa would ask for permission to go pick up someone, be it her family or her friends, through WhatsApp conversations again between Namsa and Major Begizol. You can see from this interaction how important asking for permission is because this person is moving from experience. You can tell. She basically says, If you don't mind, uh, if you don't have a problem, but this is tata for a day or two. Basically meaning, can I please go fetch my sister from her place? She's basically going to come to my place for a day or two. And then he replies and says, oh, I'm going to phone in, which is, I've been on the phone the whole time since I got back. And then she says, I'm sorry. And then she says, for what? For the car? And then he he answers something else and says, no, have you have you picked up your sister, Usanga? And then she says, no, Bendi, salinde we na undikulule. Basically meaning, no, I was still waiting for you to give me permission. She then goes on to prove it by sending him a screenshot of the location, basically a live location of, listen, I'm still at home. And then she sends a message after that, that look, the sell up and clean. So this shows you that one permission is a big thing here because there's no one who's going to send location and explain and ask unless previously you've gotten into trouble for it. So this is the extent of just the control. So Namsa was fully controlled by Major. And I think Major also just enjoyed uh, ridiculing the woman in his life. And I include the wife because there's no wife that's going to know that you have another girlfriend and be absolutely happy with it and absolutely happy with driving the car when you've confiscated the car from the girlfriend. One other way Major would ridicule Namsa is that he would put Namsa on loudspeaker and call her while uh, chilling with his friends and then he'd ask a question like who's the minister of a certain portfolio and then namsa would say i don't know and then all his friends would start laughing in the background and then major would say you see guys i told you she's dumb and i mean i don't understand why major was with namsa like i don't understand why you would not just want to break up with someone it's like he enjoyed making her feel less than or making her feel small i don't understand like i don't understand like why not just leave her and unfortunately namsa also to her end she endured and uh she started creating systems for herself just to make sure that you know what if i do this or if i don't do this then this is going to make sure that he doesn't get angry and and ultimately he doesn't hit me or he doesn't emotionally abuse me so she created all these systems for herself to make sure that you know what, at all times, she is covered. And obviously, those systems did not work every time. And what she would do if they don't work is that she apologized. One thing about Namsa, she apologized. She apologized if she felt like... She apologized whether she was wrong, whether he was wrong, she apologized. Unfortunately, yet again, apology or no apology, Major continued to make Namsa's life miserable. Now, you must remember, Namsa entered this relationship at the age of 17. She was now in her 30s. Namsa fell pregnant with Major's kids twice. And at both times, Major said to Namsa that you need to take out the baby. And I quote, the reason for this is because you can't raise my kids in a flat, so take them out. And of course, Namsa is going to listen to Major, and she did. And you know what? Someone would think, oh, maybe she, he was doing it to protect his relationship. You must remember now he's married. Major, at this point, I believe, had two kids with the wife and four with other women in the streets, not Namsa. So it wasn't a matter of I'm being loyal to my wife. It was I don't want you to have my child. But I also don't want you to leave me. So basically, I want your life to be stagnant. Since 17, you can't push other things besides me. Selfish. And the stuff that I've mentioned so far in the video is not even a fraction 
of the stuff that is available in the public domain of the many examples of the amount of things that this man has made this lady do or has done to her directly. It is so sad. It is extremely atrocious. And I urge you guys to visit her sister's page, Sangha, on Facebook and just read more of the WhatsApp messages. If I would have to narrate each and every one of them, would literally be here. For a week so i do apologize that i'm not gonna say all of the stuff that he did but i think so far we get the picture he was vile he was dirty he was disgusting and he was just out on a mission to dehumanize Nantla, which is extremely painful so fast forward now to the year 2018 major is doing extremely well in terms of business and he's flourishing financially and then all of a sudden, he gets arrested. And the reason for his arrest, you ask? Attempted murder as well as murder. So this is what we know for sure, is that he got arrested for the murder of Mkolise as well as the attempted murder of Utembela. Now, he was last seen with this man before they were found with gunshot wounds inside of them. Now, fortunately, Tembela survived but was severely injured while the other man passed away. Hence, the murder and the attempted murder. Now, what happened next, you ask? Well, he was arrested, but he got out on bail. 50,000 rands bail, to be precise. And what happened next? Nothing. Till this day, nothing happened next. That man was arrested. Yeah, he got bail. He paid 50,000 rands. But the case never happened. Nothing ever happened after that. And it's completely quiet. Because people believe this man is connected. And he was able to pay people off that wanted to be paid off to make the case to disappear and they chucked it under the rug. I think naturally this made him feel invincible. With all the money that he had, he also believed that he had power because he's literally get, getting away with a double homicide. And you know what? He used to mention it a lot to Mnamtla. Uh, the system has said that if um, there was any talk about possibly going to the police, he was like, are you reading the papers? Are you, read, are you reading up about me? Do you, do you know what I did? And do you see where I am? So he definitely felt like he could get away with anything. I think never in his life did he think that if he would do something again, it would be such a high profile case. And unfortunately for him, uh, this case is high profile. And if he gets away with it, then I'm South African law is shameful. Naturally, as the years went on, Namkla just was drawing, drawing more and more tired of this whole relationship. It was taking away from her. She was, you could see that she was physically exhausted as much as she acted bubbly in front of friends and family. But she spoke more about wanting to end the relationship with her sister. You'd see their interactions when they spoke on Facebook because unfortunately he would go through her phone, uh, her WhatsApp. So she would have the interactions with the sister on Facebook inbox and then block her. How sad. Um, so she mentioned more and more and more to her sister how she just wanted to live this relationship and how she just feels like she's going to die in this relationship and stuff like that. So as the years were going on and she was getting older, at this point, I'm was 34 years old. So she, she was exhausted. She was exhausted. She had been going through this since the age of 17 and she had every reason to be exhausted. And on the 5th of January, 2022, the beginning of the end started. Now, Major and Namsa had one of their small arguments. And of course, it's always a one-sided argument. Major didn't like something and Namsa had to apologize. And even though she apologized, she had to face the repercussions. So the beginning of the end started on the 5th of January 22, 2022. Major beat Namtla up like he has never before. To the extent of which her sister mentioned that the beating took place in a course of eight hours with the shambok. And he would give her breaks to go and shower and then he would come back and beat her up again. This happened, like I said, for a period of eight hours. And after this, Namsla literally said, no, it's it. Now, this is it. I can't. Full stop. It ends now. I believe that this was Namsla's breaking point. It was a moment of saying, I've endured too much and I don't care what happens after this fact. Now, what is sad for me is the fact that we all know that statistically it shows that 
the time when women in abusive relationships are the most um, in danger is when they're about to leave a relationship. The stats show, I know the case about the Forte lady who was found in a suitcase, was killed by her boyfriend. Recently, this happened in 2021. She was about to leave. The lady who was found buried under her bathtub in Aiduya was also about to leave. So basically what I'm saying is that you are the most in danger as a person who is in an abusive relationship when you want to leave it. And it's always recommended that you must have an exit plan. Plan it out well, every step. Plan out every other outcome. Think of it. If this happens, what am I going to do? If this happens, what am I going to do? Go and report it to the police, even if they're not going to do anything, because sometimes, unfortunately, we live in South Africa, they will do absolutely nothing. But have everything in record. Put out videos. I would recommend. Do you know what? I would have hoped and I wished, and I'm not blaming anyone, I'm not victim blaming, but if I wish Namtla was the one who took out these videos herself, because then maybe he was going to say, well, because all these videos are out, I can't kill her because people are going to know it's me. And unfortunately, the videos came out after she had passed. And before then, he felt invincible because he had two had an attempted murder and and the murder and nothing happened to him so you're dealing with a guy who in who who felt powerful he felt like he's the man so it's it's very sad so i say this to say is that namsa decided she would pack her bags leave her flat and go back and stay as duadwa with her extended family her aunt and her uncle welcomed her back with open arms and she was back home so naturally major found out that she was no longer at her flat and had moved in back at home after the beating and i'm just going to show you some of the interactions they had after that fact just to see like may you can see that major is still trying to control the narrative he's still trying to make sure that he doesn't lose his grip and he's being manipulative and he's using all his cards he's being sensitive and then he's being angry and then he's being possessive so you can just see that all through the whatsapp messages that they had after she had moved back home so this conversation happened over a course of hours i think one that sticks out to me is this one major sends a message he says um okay I don't know what he says before, but Namkla answers and says, Ndigui pains, ha, I am surviving. Basically, I'm in pain, but I'm surviving. And then he asks, Usis Dwa, meaning are you in Stwadwa or are you home? And then she says, yes. And then he asks, when Zandone Stwadwa, if I may ask, or Uselele Ndone Stwadwa. And he asks, is, what are you doing there? And why are you, why are you still there? And then she says, Ndifuna Ubalapa, and essentially meaning, I just want to be here. And then he says, what makes you want to be there? And then she says, I just miss home. And then he says, it's fine. But according to me, and that basically says you missed home at the wrong time. And basically that means I've bitten you so much and you look like you, you're, ba- you're black and blue all over your body. Why would you go home now? Now you want your family to see what I've done. And then he says, do you remember 2009, what I said about going home when you went there in June? And my thing is, it's 2022. How can she remember that? And then he says again, I bought what basically meaning why are you quiet? And then out of fear, obviously, she immediately says is that can I get back to you? Okay, fine. I don't know how that conversation ended. They started another conversation later on at night. And now, because he wants control, he knows that she is home and now she's she's moving away. So he wants control. So what he says is that basically he's saying, please put me as your profile picture. Like the nerve, like why? Why am I doing that? You hit me, I'm home. Why am I doing that? And then she says, I don't want uh, your picture on my WhatsApp. And he she says, please don't start, um, don't start a fight or don't start petty stuff. Um, I don't want a picture on my WhatsApp. But I think she remembers quickly that, yay, I'm dealing with the wrong one here. So see, she sends a picture of I love you and then says good night after that. And then he says, in response to the I love you and the good night, I understand, baby, but my picture. Yo, and then she replies, Anna, you don't. 
you you don't understand dt and the funny bitch of what's up um, and you can see that she's fighting here yeah, like she has full control and i can't stress how proud i am for her responding like this this is actually one of the few times where she's assertive and she's strong and she's like no i don't want you on my profile picture actually he then replies and says sharp makabis which is i think it's a clan name basically saying is that you won't hear me asking or begging for that again she then replies and says that actually she also doesn't understand why he is demanding this it's not like she has ever asked him to put her up as a profile picture and and then she's like Unani, even a wallpaper in his response, he basically picks apart the fact that she's saying wallpaper and asks, so you wanted me to have you as a wallpaper when I'm at home with my wife. And that's where those conversations ended at that point. But basically, you could see that even him, I'm sure he sensed that actually I'm losing control here. Like this person is answering me how she wants. Never in my life have I experienced this. And he felt that he is losing control. So at an attempt to control the narrative one and also to remain in control, he's like, okay, let me look for other tricks in my bag. Maybe apologizing is going to help. So he starts by sending um, her a message, basically saying, like, show me the pills your doctor gave to you when you went to hospital. Because obviously she had to go to hospital because of just the state of her body and the injuries. And there could have been internal injuries um after the shambok beating so he says something like please send me the pills that you got from hospital i just want to see if they sent you antibiotics gave you antibiotics like he cares like like do you care like you're the reason we here you're the reason i have to take those antibiotics like stop it and then he goes on and then he apologizes but his apology is cold cold is an understatement he says, I don't know how to explain Ukolo wait. Ukolo is like, oh, sorry, by the way. Oh, sorry, whatever. It's the most condescending sorry in the history of sorries. It's like, whatever. And then he goes on. I'm not even going to go through that whole paragraph because he's just explaining how. I'm sorry, but it's your fault. I'm sorry, but if you, it's because you don't change. I'm sorry, it's because you always do the same stuff. So basically, it's the worst and sorry. It's, it's, the, it's the worst, and I'm sorry, in the world. But with all these interactions going on, Namla remained in Estuardo with her family, and she was like, I'm not going back. They would have interactions on WhatsApp, but Namla would be like, mm -mm, no, let's break up. Like, I want it to end. To the extent of which, uh, Major came to Namla's house in pajamas, and then they had to chase him away. Like, the uncles chased him away. And some, why are you here? Why are you at my house? in pyjamas like go you're not gonna get namfla if you want namfla not in my house and no it's not happening we're not gonna give namfla to you so he tried he tried for a while and i think at some point he he saw that actually you know what i'm not getting this person back um let's just stop working which is great for namfla and unfortunate for him because he wanted to enslave her naturally as he usually did the next step that he was going to do was that he was going to start confiscating his stuff he took back the car that he had just recently bought for her and you know what love what namla did after that is that she went and she hired herself a car so she went to hire um, a great vw polo and she would then start driving that around Namsha was determined to start her life around. And if it meant she had to start off from zero, and then that was what she was going to do. But you know what? Namsha was also having the time of her life during this time. Is that she had been controlled since the age of 17. She had never done anything without permission. So for the first time in a very, very long time, since she was a teenager, she was able to have full control over her life. And you know what she did? She went on holiday with her sister, Osanga. They went on a long road trip to Johannesburg and they had fun. They took pictures on the way. They got to Johannesburg. They went to spas. They took videos. They had the grand all time. In March of 2022, they had the times of their lives. And Sanga would later say that she felt like Namkla was saying goodbye. She felt like Namkla 
was saying goodbye because they had never done something like that before, naturally, because she was under control. But also just the amount of fun and connection and the talks and everything that happened during that time is that, in retrospect, definitely she was saying goodbye. Because when we came back from Johannesburg, just a month after that in April, the worst thing would happen. In April, Namsa was still staying at home. In this Dwadwa, she was coming back from work on the 22nd of April of 2022. And she drove up her driveway and got into her house. Now, she was still in the car. This car was still on. And um, the aunt was in the car, was in the house. And she said that she heard something that sounded like a bullet, a gunshot. And she immediately went towards the door to check what's going on. And when she got there, and then she had more. And she looked out, and she saw that uh, Namsa's polo was outside. She was inside the car, and there was a man in the window, and he was shooting. The man continued to shoot while Namsa's aunt was standing there, she says she begged. She begged for her life. She did not only beg, she started apologizing on her behalf. She said anything, whatever she did, she is sorry on her behalf. They apologize. She is sorry. She pleaded for her life. That man continued shooting. She says to the extent of which she, after, like in retrospect, when she looks back, is that that man wanted to make sure. He wanted to make sure that she 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 doesn't live the man shot unamla nine times and then when he was done shooting he turned around he didn't shoot the aunt the aunt was there the aunt was begging for her life he didn't shoot the aunt he turned around and he, he walked out of the gate and he walked away it was late in the evening and the aunt says that he did not see his face he's stronger let's get to jula in a nervous being, they are cowards and they are volunteers. They are puma game like because can puma, puma come can't it? Have a party can blend up. They were at it. I go shock of my life. We are to do la. I belong to. We are to do la. We need to, to, to. I go go sound. If I get inside the sack. Upper passenger window, Lena, and you as an assassin's flag, and the am gone, but you find about Unamsa, who will upper air, upper way, quick, 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 either with passenger seat or blend away in Yaw. Who won a warm book, and as a guy at two life, born who to whom to Owenza, shop, shop, shop. And the I was talking all young in Donga, I tell her, I don't think you can enter them now, these are allegations. It is not believed that Major went and killed Namsa by himself. No. But it is believed that he paid someone to do it. And it is believed that he paid someone a measly 10,000 rands to do it, which is so atrocious to think that someone's life is worth that much. The aunt would later say that on the day that man killed Namsa, he did not only kill Unamsa, 
he killed her and he killed the rest of her family. Because Samsha was such a nice, bubbly, kind person. It was so unnecessary. It is so unnecessary. I want to say thankfully, because most cases don't make it to the media. So thankfully, Sangha, who is Namsha's sister, put out all of the information she had. She put out all the videos. She put out WhatsApp conversations. She put out pictures of what has been happening to Namsha, to the extent of which her death became viral, her case became viral, and all of this information was out in the public domain. This helped the case because unfortunately in South Africa for a case to even get the attention it deserves, then we have to spill all our toys out of the cot. So the case definitely got attention. It was trending. There were strikes. Uh, political parties got involved. Christian organizations got involved. And um, the police took the case seriously to the extent of which uh, they decided to take a lady from Limpombo to come down. Let's bring someone who can be influenced. So let's fix someone. They don't have a holdover. There's language barriers and all of these things. I'm telling you that lady was there for three months. And in September, she was like, I'm out. I can't. There have been attempts on my life. I'm being threatened, left, right, and center. It's not worth it. And she went back to Limbombo. And this was September. September was two months ago. Uh, we sent a very uh, senior police to come and investigate uh, a brigadier from Limbombo. We had to protect her. We have to ship her out uh, because there were threats on her life herself. So we have brought a new investigator because that investigator could not go on so there were more things than we thought it was seems like it's not an innocent death that happened there where we need to find the killer for the fact that you threaten and we had to protect the investigator it tells us that it's broader it's much broader than we thought investigations are going on uh, I, I, definitely this quite sensitive there are things that i can uh, reveal that makes life difficult for the investigators even investigators that are based there we have to uh, protect the investigators that are investigating the case but that is not going to stop us investigating and going forward investigations are going on as i've said much difficult than we thought but uh, we, we we will make the breakthrough there are names that are brushed around there are investigators that are threatened but the answer needs to be found at least I can agree with him that this person needs to be found. So I am going to take this opportunity to plead with you guys to share the video. I don't normally ask for these videos to be shared because most of the cases are concluded. But when it comes to an unsolved case and the person that we want behind bars is still wandering the streets, then we need to make sure, especially when we're dealing with someone who has tricks, who has connections, and who is willing to people off so that he stays outside, then um, we're dealing with someone that is, is, is more powerful than we would like. So the only power we have, unfortunately, as the people, um, as laymen and people in the streets, is if we can make sure that we keep this on top of the roll. We make sure that they, they book into the book. We make sure that this, this case has a stay in court, unlike those other two cases. And unfortunately, if... If they never get their justice, they will get it through Namsha. And um, so please share as much as you can so that he doesn't get away with it, man. And with that said, uh, we're at the end of the video. I'm happy I'm back. I know this video is shaky. I haven't done a video in a long, long time. So I'm definitely going to back, get back to the swing of things. So I would appreciate some positive comments with regard to that. And then also, guys, I'll see you next time. Next time, I'll be doing the story of the young lady from Fort Hay who was found in a suitcase. It's a very sad one. Um, like most of the cases, like all of the cases that I do, actually, it's extremely painful. So I hope I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.